Well, hi folks, and welcome back for the third, and I'm very pleased to say, final part of my uh, DIY battery tab spot welder series. Um, I'm finished just about. There's still one more piece printing, but we don't need to worry about that. Anyway, let's get into uh, where, how we got from where we were last weekend until now. Let's go. Okay, so I've modified the code now on this microcontroller and I've moved all of the maths out of my timing loop. Given that a test, we were still about 750 microseconds out. So I've done all the maths outside the loop and deducted 750 microseconds. So that sorted out the timing issue with this, which was probably not an issue. Incidentally, since the last video, this is the first time I've powered this up since then, and the display seems to have lost half of its lines, but as I've got another nine of these spare, I'm just going to swap that out. I'm not particularly worried about that. And here I've got this NPN transistor chosen on the basis that it was in my component tray and not plugged into a piece of foam, and for no other reason. And a 2K resistor similarly chosen because it was out loose on the desk and I didn't even have to look for it. Um, 10K is probably a better value, but that was just out and about. However, we are now working properly. Um, that doesn't really show you anything yet, oh, even if I put it in shot. Uh, our LED glows a little bit brighter there. So, on to the action. So I'm just running this on 48 volts at the moment as a kind of safety measure. I shouldn't get a buzz if I touch anything by accident and it still proves the point. And we've got the oscilloscope hooked straight across the output of the transformer now. Um, we've got our pulse time set to 44 milliseconds for the first one, 256 for the delay, 200 for the second. And there we have it, our 50 hertz pulse is coming through. Uh, 44 milliseconds worth of those, 256 delay, 200 milliseconds of pulses. So um, looks like it's working. Interestingly, I think this SSR is switching on at the zero crossover points. Every time I've triggered this, it consistently seems to start on a zero and finish whenever I turn the signal off. Um, it's interesting considering the paper that someone pointed me at in the comments saying how this was a bad thing to do, but uh, seems to be what this does. I haven't implemented any extra circuitry for that. So I might get on and give this an actual test weld now. So still on 48 volts, so I'm not expecting much in the way of action here. Uh, actually got this in shot. This is going to be a masterpiece of having an extra hand somewhere. Here goes. 48 volt weld test. And that made no noticeable difference at all. 120 volts in now. And uh, we're going with... Oh, I see smoke. Something happened. Didn't get a weld, but I don't think I had the two things lined up over each other. Try that again. I can feel the uh, pulses in the... I've got a weld! Not a good weld, but I've got a weld. Awesome. Okay, we'll crank that up a bit further. Here we are, full on mains voltage input now. And about two volts coming out of here at quite a lot of amps, I would imagine. Here goes. Oh, that was pretty. That was uh, more energy than was required. But that is definitely, well, it's a weld anyway. Not the best weld, but then I can't actually hold this thing straight. Right, so we think we have too much energy in our second pulse here. And we'll crank that down a bit. Okay, we're about. 136 milliseconds on the first pulse, 200 odd on the second. Wish I had another hand. That was nice and energetic. Here we go. It still didn't weld properly. Don't know why that failed to weld. 
Mm. Well, certainly uh, the electronics is working. I'm going to stop playing with that now. I'm sure I'll have plenty of time to play with that later. But uh, very happy about that. Since I'm putting all of this in a 3D printed case and the melting point of the plastic's fairly low, I'm just going to add in this little uh, 10K NTC PTC thermistor that uh, I scavenged out of a power supply at some time. So I'll have it read that in via the analog input and uh, make sure we're not overheating before we start sending the pulses through. So I'm just going to work out some extra circuitry on the breadboard for that, a little bit of extra code, and then I'll wire those onto the uh, piece of strip board there and we should be good to go. So here we are, tested and working, got our little NPN transistor stuck in there to drive the output to the solid state relay, and I've got my little 10k NTC thermistor there just in a potential divider setup with this resistor and as is of course expected for a prototype I now have a couple of bodge wires one for the analog zero ADC input and another to get five volts across to this board here and I've also wired in this 5.9 volt power supply as I understand it these node MCU boards the little voltage regulator can take up to about 10 volts in so 5.9 should be okay so I'm going to put this in its little holder and give it a test off the power supply. I also replaced this display with a spare so it should be working now but here we go flip the power on and we have a working thing so I can get on now and actually stick this down with the three doodler and uh, start to put some parts inside the case. Awesome. Regular viewers may remember this three doodler which was uh, a piece of absolute garbage. Um, I just wanted to point out that that left hand three doodler is not the same as this right hand three doodler. This is the three doodler create which was sent as a replacement when I complained about this one and this thing's actually really pretty good so the only real difference is the writing's upside down on the uh, Friday afternoon version or designed for left-handers and it's the right way up on the blue coloured one so blue coloured one good grey coloured one bad anyway I'm gonna see if I can get this uh, on camera here's my plan is just to extrude a little bit over the corners on here and it comes through there we go and that'll lock that in place do a similar trick here and I'm just going to do that around all the corners of these boards and they should be uh, locked nicely in place so just a couple of very minor design tweaks um, I've had to enlarge that hole to seven millimeters so that the rotary encoder fits properly which it now does and uh, I designed this with the display upside down so I did have a cutout in the face here for the uh, soldered connections there on the front of the display but, um, but I've now just been in with the Dremel and made a bit of space up there and kind of enhanced the space around there so everything fits and another small design tweak I'm going to need to do this capacitor over here I obviously didn't measure the height on that so that's uh, touching the touching the transformer at the moment and although the hole is partially visible there it could have done with being about three or four millimeters further over so I'm going to just redrill those with a hand drill very quickly and conveniently I've got one of my uh, failed print attempts as a drill guide so I've got a good template for getting the holes in the right places so here we go I've got the display mounted just again with the three doodler bodged some plastic in the corners told it in place and because I couldn't find a nut for this rotary encoder, I don't know where any of them are, um, I've just kind of done a, well, no one's going to see it, and built up a bit of plastic there with the three doodler as well. So uh, let's give this a quick swizz. There we go. Everything's still working. And uh, angle that down there for you. And our pulse is still flashing away quite happily. So I'll get this bit stuck in place next and uh, then bolt the transformer on and then I guess get around to designing this arm and print the uh, grommets to go in there as well. So I've decided just because I happen to have them in a drawer I'm going to add one more safety feature. I've got a 45 degree C temperature cut out there and as there's already a handy screw hole from where the uh, ground terminal used to be on high voltage windings 
I can just bend a little aluminium bracket up to hold that in place. So just a quick look at where we are at the end of another evening, but uh, we're looking pretty good so far. Um, I'll give you a quick look inside, I haven't put any screws in yet, I've just got a couple of bits of wire to stop the sides from bowing out. Let me turn that off first. So I haven't yet drilled a hole for the wire for the micro switch, I'm going to print some grommets off first before I worry about that. But here we are, all nicely uh, held together, all the high voltage connections heat shrunk, no earth connection because we are a double insulated device here, the, everything that's metal is uh, enclosed in a plastic box and uh, yeah, very very happy. Everything appears to be working. Another day has gone past and I've got my nice little Ninja Flex feet printed off. Those um, I designed those for my isolation transformer in the past. I've got my cable grommets sorted out and I've got this rather fine uh, Ninja Flex squishy rubbery knob, which uh, feels superb. I did try printing one that I found on Thingiverse, but it was too small. And didn't, didn't feel good in the hand, whereas this one's uh, ribbed for extra pleasure and just the right size. Anyway, next up, I need to uh, work out some mechanism for actually doing the weld and uh, ideally I'd like to do something that keeps things under a consistent pressure loaded up with springs and the micro switch clicks when the springs compress to the right amount but first of all I think I'm gonna bodge it as conveniently as possible so I can actually give this thing a proper test see if I can weld some battery tabs and if the bodge is uh, convenient and easy enough and the constant pressure is not too much of an issue then I'll have a quick and easy job. I'll just show you what I've come up with to get the uh, current through from these connections. So I'm going to use these, this is a 35 square mil cable, so I bought the right size of crimp connector for that. And I also bought some flat 3 mil copper bar and some 3 mil copper rod. And I've just been down in the shed playing and come up with this assembly. So I just bent a piece of the copper rod, uh, the copper bar and drilled a few holes in it another piece there and I've soldered in one of these rods so that when the bolt's done a pit clamps down on the other which gives me a way of adjusting the height so that I can make sure that both of these are at the same height and then that gets me my contact points nice and close together for welding. So I'm going to knock up something in uh, Fusion 360 to hold these things in place and I just need a couple of screw holes and a separator down the middle. So this quick hack together 3D printed arm has finished printing now and uh, I've just given it a quick sneaky test while you weren't looking with excellent results. Um, I'm not sure how we'll do on the top here because this one's been soldered on the top in the past. So let's see what happens. And yeah. There we go, it likes this battery. I mean, that's basically good enough, I think. So I actually have this working really pretty well now. Uh, it's certainly functional enough that I can easily string together battery packs and if I make grunting noises you'll know quite how much I'm trying to get these to break but uh, seem to be making really good weld joints and nice and consistent now. Oh that was exciting. There we go that's better. Um, but my only problem now is that this welding head end actually gets fairly warm fairly quickly and I don't think the uh, PLA which will soften at about 60 degrees C is going to be up to the job. So I think my mission for tomorrow is to make a new swing arm out of this rectangle section aluminium bar and I figure I can use two bits of it going down in parallel to replace this plastic arm, make some cutouts in round about the same place and put a sheet of insulating material down the middle to stop them contacting each other and that will then take care of the heat transfer and then all I need is a better bolt rather than these two drill bits and we're done. Okay so after another few hours of uh, sawing and drilling things in the shed we're up and working in what I believe will be my final configuration. 
So I just cut two of this inch by half inch sections of uh, its two mil thick aluminium section and uh, replaced that swing arm that I'd made out of plastic before. Um, I designed some little, uh, I'm not quite sure what to call these, clamping brackets just to maintain the space between these two because although we've only got two volts between these two, obviously I don't want to short circuit. Screwed my micro switch on over the side here, which you can't see in the shot and uh, slightly improved the clamping here. So we've got a, a good spacing between there. And I've finally crimped the terminals in. And uh, just out of interest, this hinge mechanism here, this is just the sleeve of a biro that I sawed in half because I needed something non-conductive so I couldn't use any kind of metal fastener there. But we're all up and working. So um, let's have a go at welding a battery pack together. So here's the cells that I've had kicking around for over a year now and uh, I just need to take off some of the little existing weld connections I believe. Um, hopefully these will come off okay. If not I'll just weld directly onto the top of them. we go that took no time at all um, still got to do some uh, splits across there but that's uh, what's that 5 10 15 30 60 connections in yeah absolute doddle superb very happy job done just for the curious this last piece that I'm still 3d printing is just a little hand rest cover to go over the top of these bolts here so when you press down on it it's a bit more comfortable on the hand. Uh, make no difference to the functionality but uh, just slightly more comfort. So that's it. Thank you very much for joining me for this series folks. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you to everyone who's been putting comments and suggestions below. Um, I really just don't have time to reply to everyone anymore I'm afraid or I would have time if I wasn't doing projects. So sorry, I feel really bad that I haven't replied to everyone, but there's been some wonderful suggestions coming through. So believe me, I read all the comments. Thank you very much for your input. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this folks and see you next time. Bye.